welcome. Today we shall be looking at how as a child of God you can tap into God's power for daily living and fight your battles. As we journey in this dark and wicked world we shall encounter trials and temptations. And God expects us to lean on his arm and trust him to come to our aid to fight our battles. Before I continue, I have a favor to ask of you. If you have not already subscribed, please support our work by doing so, and share the video with family and friends. Thank you. The Apostle Paul was teaching us about spiritual warfare in Ephesians chapter 6, but before he talks about the armor, he tells us. Be strong in the Lord, and in the power of his might, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. What is the power of his might? Simply put, the phrase means his mighty power. Sometimes the Lord is described as strong and mighty, and sometimes as almighty. God uses these phrases so that we grasp the significance of his infinite, almighty power. How do we tap into God's source of power to fight our daily battles? This requires two acts of faith. First, you must have a settled, firm persuasion that the Lord is almighty in power. This is very important because unless we believe within our spirit that God's power super exceeds any other power we have lost the battle before it even begun. When a man has not settled this fundamental truth, he tends to look at the raging storm and not at God. Second, you must not only believe that God is almighty, but also that God will use this almighty power for your defense. God expects you to meet every trial, and every temptation, leaning on his arm. Just as a father walking over a rough path offers his hand to his child, so God reaches forth his power for his children's faith to cling to. When we see a Christian reaching out to the arm of flesh in times of trouble, then such a believer does not believe that God's power is available to save him. God demonstrated this attribute of his power to our forefathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, as God Almighty but by my name the Lord I did not make myself known to them, Exodus chapter 6 verse 3. That was what they relied on in life and in battle. That was what made them victorious in battle. That was what they bequeathed to their children, telling them the Lord has done all these, because of his great power and mighty strength. They never doubted God because they had seen the almighty power of God at work. And they knew God always did what he had promised. But at times in spite of all that we have seen God do, we still have doubts. Moses's faith in God sometimes wavered even after God had demonstrated his mighty power before, during, and after liberating the Israelites from Egypt. When the children of Israel started to crave a different food apart from the manna God provided. God told Moses, tomorrow I will give them meat to eat. Moses doubted God, and in Numbers chapter 11 verses 21 to 22 he told God. Here I am among 600,000 men on foot, yet you say, I will give them meat, and they will eat for a month. If all our flocks and herds were slaughtered for them, would they have enough? Or if all the fish in the sea were caught for them, would they have enough? Moses, for a brief period, lost sight of the almighty power of God and questioned how the Lord could keep his word. What promise has God given you, and you have said in your heart? O oh God, this time you have overestimated your power. Was it when he said in Matthew chapter 6 verses 31 to 32. Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat? Or, What shall we drink? Or, What shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. And here you are, staring at your bills and rent that is due. So you say in your heart, Lord you have overestimated your power this time, let me go find someone to help me. And God is going to say to you, just as he told Moses, has my arm lost its power? Now you will see whether or not my word comes true. This doubt by God's children was also manifested at the graveside of Lazarus. Mary said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. John chapter 11 verse 32. And her sister Martha added, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days, verse 39. These were both godly women, yet they had serious doubts about the extent of Christ's power. Mary limited him to place, Lord, if you had been here. As if God is limited by space, he can save whether he is present or absent. He can save one person in the Arctic and another in the Antarctic, he is not limited by space. The other limited him as to time, by this time there will be an odor. As if God cannot reach out into time and wrench out the dead from the grave, he is not limited by time. Despite their unbelief, God proved himself faithful. 
It is God's will and it shall forever be His will that we trust only Him. God demands to be called the Almighty. He insists we place our confidence in Him. The child of God who does as his father commands is wise. A man may be called wise, merciful, or mighty. But only God is all-wise, all-merciful, and almighty. When we leave out this prefix, all, we nickname God and call him by a creature's name, which he will not answer to. Our faith is so important to God that he will sometimes chastise his dearest children when they falter in this area. He expects us to trust him even when we come off poorly by our own standards. We are not to argue or reason. We are to submit and cling to the promise of his power poured forth for us. Zacharias merely asked the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife well stricken in years, Luke chapter 1 verse 18. And for daring to question the vastness of God's power, he was struck dumb on the spot. Are you looking at your sick loved one and asking, Can the Lord heal her? Or are you staring at your wayward child and wondering, Can the Lord snatch him from the jaws of hell? God longs for his children to believe his word, and not dispute his power. One thing we can learn about Abraham's faith was that he was, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised, Romans chapter 4 verse 21. You must be fully convinced that God will do everything that he has promised he will do. What does the Bible say? Not one of the good promises which the Lord had made to the house of Israel failed, all came to pass, Joshua chapter 21 verse 45. Blessed be the Lord, who has given rest to his people Israel, according to all that he promised. Not one word has failed of all his good promise, which he promised through Moses his servant, 1 Kings chapter 8 verse 56. For as many as are the promises of God, in him they are yes. Therefore also through him is our amen to the glory of God through us, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20. To encourage our trust, the Lord often intervenes in mighty ways on our behalf. Sometimes he allows an opposing force to arise, so that at precisely the right moment he can raise up a more magnificent pillar of remembrance to himself. This pillar will stand in the very ruins of that which contested his power. He allowed Satan to afflict Job, and when the time was right he intervened to bless Job twofold. The very place where Job suffered loss and humiliation, was the very place he was lifted up. This is so, so that when he intervenes all must say, Almighty power was here. Such was the case with Lazarus. Christ stayed away until the man was dead in order to give a greater demonstration of his power. Do you remember the exodus of the Israelites? If God had brought Israel out of Egypt while Joseph was still a prince, they probably would have had an easy departure. Instead, God reserved his deliverance for the reign of that proud Pharaoh who cruelly oppressed them, so that his children might know beyond doubt who had delivered them. God's timely intervention is a confirmation that you can believe his almighty power is yours, engaged for your defense and help in all trials and temptations. Do you think God is delaying in answering your prayer? It is so because when the answer finally comes you will be in no doubt that it is the mighty arm of God that has done it. When God miraculously brought Israel out of Egypt, did he just set them down on the other side of the Red Sea to find their way to Canaan, using their own skill and strength? No. And in the wilderness, where you have seen how the Lord your God carried you, as a man carries his son, all the way that you went until you came to this place. Deuteronomy 131. When the saint is marching on and the whole country rises up against him, how will he get safely past all his enemies' borders? God, himself will enfold him in the arms of everlasting strength. We are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 5. The power of God is that shoulder on which Christ carries you, his lost sheep, home, rejoicing as he goes, Luke chapter 15 verse 5. The everlasting arms of his strength are eagle's wings, upon which you are both tenderly and securely conveyed to glory, Exodus chapter 19 verse 4. It is my prayer that as you continue to trust him for your day-to-day -day living and strength, the Lord himself carry you on eagle's wings and bring you to himself, to a place of rest. God bless you. Amen.